Yo, it's your boy D Star coming to you live from the pad, about to give it to you raw. And I'm gonna keep it 1,000. So, uh, man, let's talk about it. This is Lonzo's second game in the Las Vegas Summer League. He showed out, got a triple double, 11, 11, 11. Um, sound like Migos, like I'm rapping. 11, 11, 11. 11 points, 11 boards, 11. Yeah, 11 points, 11 boards, 11 assists. And who really showed up or who really looked like Scottie Pippen was Kyle Kuzma. He had 31 points. Uh, he was a leading scorer for the Lakers now that uh, Ingram was out. Ingram, uh, as you all guys already know, uh, has to sit out for the rest of the summer league. I saw people somber, but I'm, I'm actually happy. I mean, he's clearly night and day way better than what he was last season to me from what i seen it just seems that it's it was a mental thing now that that mental block is lifted he i mean he has the demeanor that he knows what he has to do he worked on it and i mean he's to me he's just clearly better so he had no business in the summer league anyhow but that's going to be the shooter that Lonzo Ball is going to be getting his assist from, clearly, uh, and and uh, uh, who else? That David, D David Mwaba, he had 13 points, eight boards, spark plug. Who I really wanted to see was was uh, Zubats because Zubats didn't have a, a great game that first preseason either, but uh, for some reason he didn't get much time, if any time during the game so it was like what the hell i, I kind of wanted to see him get in there but so uh lonzo ball had a statement game after going two for 15 against the clippers he went up against the third pick it was jason tatum who's a very very good player and jalen brown and you know it was a very very good game competitive game up until that fourth quarter where lakers kind of made some mistakes towards the end and you know stupid stuff like not knowing you know not having their feet set properly being out of bounds and not having that awareness and it's just a lot of foolishness and uh, lakers ended up losing anyhow it's just I saw I saw Alonzo throw a lot of great passes that didn't convert because he just doesn't have the shooters. And so one one of the knocks on Alonzo Ball that I was seeing online were people commenting that he doesn't take over the basketball game, but he's a facilitator. First and foremost, he's a facilitator. If you even listen to his father after the game, what was that? Yesterday, uh, I mean, after he lost that game against the Clippers. He was saying that, wow, that uh, Lonzo Ball is the type of player that's going to make everybody else around him better. It's contagious. And that's kind of what we saw the first game, despite him having a really bad game. This game it was just, I mean, this was proof that Lonzo Ball is a, is a floor general. Now, this is a knock that uh, they had against LeBron, that LeBron was just too unselfish it's almost like hey man why don't you just dominate offensively and this is a difference between Lonzo Ball and a De'Aaron Fox who he's going to face on Monday uh, he's going to face De'Aaron Fox on Monday so that's going to be very interesting but De'Aaron Fox was a guy who allegedly owned him at the Sweet 16 as we all know so this will, this will be a game that I guess <laughs> kind of revenge because they hear each other and what everyone everybody says all the players list to each other so uh <laughs> lonzo ball versus uh, uh what's his, what's his name they're gonna get it cracking on monday but look it's almost that when, when you when you have a player like Lon, lonzo ball he's not gonna go for 30 points and I mean, he's not going to offensively take over a basketball game himself. I mean, he doesn't have that type of offensive command off top right now as a 19 year old going up against these. Uh, that'll come later. 
You know, he's not going to be Chris Paul out here, you know, dropping 30 and, uh, you know, with 10 assists and six rebounds every single game. That's just not going to happen. But what you'll get from a lot of these other point guards is that these guys will have like 30 points, but they'll have like four assists or five assists and, you know, maybe a couple steals or something like that. But nobody, they, they, they got blown out and they lost. And this, this, uh, this is something that the Varbois had said after today's game was that, hey, it doesn't matter what his stats are. He could have a triple-double. He could have a quadruple-double, pretty much. All that matters at the end of the day is wins or losses. So you can you can be uh, as talented as you want, but if you lost a game, what does it matter? So uh, LeVar Ball has a point, and Lonzo Ball knows that and understands that. But there's going to be a lot of games that... <laughs> the Lakers are going to lose. Uh, I think we're going to probably, I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. I hope that we do. I mean, you guys can cre uh, comment down below who you think will get one through eight. Now, when you get down to the eighth spot, it gets kind of tricky. It gets kind of, I don't really know what's going to happen, but at least the first six are, are clear who the first six are in, in a um, Western Conference. But the seventh and eighth, that's kind of tricky. Uh, so I'll let you guys do that in the comment section. But there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of losses this season. Uh, I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. I hope that we do. But obviously, uh, things may. Uh, I mean, it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a breakout season by a couple of players. It's going to take Alonzo Ball. I mean, it's going to take Lonzo Ball. It's going to take Brandon Ingram and another player like a Jordan Clarkson or a Julius Randle, who's in, in, I mean, incredible shape, incredible shape. I don't know if you guys seen those pictures, but Julius Randle's in incredible shape. And you, I, I mean, it's going to take a breakout season for, for three guys for the Lakers to get to the playoffs. I mean, all three at the same time. So it's possible when you have a facilitator like Lonzo Ball. He's just going to make guys look better. There's going to be a lot of flashy plays. But uh, one of the one of the things that I see people say is that Lonzo Ball doesn't know how to offensively take over a game. And Robert Ori mentioned this earlier was that, like, you know, he's, he's I mean, his comparison is Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd wasn't when he came into the league, wasn't just dominating offensively. It came in time. And what happened? You know, he eventually faced the Lakers with the New Jersey Nets with Vince Carter. I think, yeah, he, he, he faced it when Byron Scott was a coach. So, I mean, when you have a Jason Kidd type player who, who looks like it, I mean, from, a, from, a, from jump, that that is a hell of a that's a hell of a deal. If you can get some, anything close to Jason Kidd, that's a hell of a deal. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I mean, people. Exp if this guy doesn't have, if this guy doesn't have a triple double every single game, you could just go have haters every single time. You had guys just overreact and calling him a bust after the first game, which is ridiculous. It's insane. Uh, but Lakers need to get shooters. Who, what free agents are out there? We got Rajon Rondo. We got Aaron Afalo. And we also have CJ Miles out there. We're still waiting on the, uh, the Ken talk with KCP. With the whole Detroit being waived and or being renounced as an unrestricted free agent. Otto Porter being signed by Washington. Now Brooklyn, they go chase after KCP. And... The Lakers try to hope that <laughs> Brooklyn doesn't offer him a multi-year deal, but because if they do, they have the power to, they they can offer a multi-year deal. So Lakers are kind of waiting on Brooklyn Nets to offer Contavious Caldwell Pope that that some kind of deal and see what he does because the Lakers are going to try to offer Contavious Caldwell Pope a 
a uh, one year balloon deal and try to get him to re-sign for a longer term deal after that year so uh, I think it's a long shot that we get Contavious Caldwell Pope but we have to wait and see and uh, it looks like Jamal Crawford went with the Timberwolves so uh, it's not really like breaking my heart I was hoping that he would sign with the Lakers for a one year deal but oh well life goes on so uh, Monday all right, that's the next game. They go against the Sacramento Kings. This is De'Aaron Fox versus Lonzo Ball. Forgot to mention Hart. Josh Hart came down a little funny. Looks like he injured himself. I don't know how serious that is. I don't know what the x-ray scans were, or if, even if he got an x-ray scan. I'm pretty sure he did, but he had to leave the game. I hope it's not really nothing too critical, not too drastic, but he came down kind of awkward when it, it was a collision he was either going for a shot or he was going for a block or something and he had a collision and he, he was just like in pain he tried to walk it off couldn't quite walk it off but I hope it's nothing serious uh, but man this man this brother needs some shooters around him it's your boy star like comment subscribe and uh, I'm out peace